Okay, 5.2, congruent polygons. Congruent polygons, in congruent polygons, all corresponding angles are congruent. All corresponding sides are also congruent. So sometimes you'll see this summarized since uh, we've got all the angles are congruent, all the sides are congruent. Sometimes you'll see this written as all corresponding parts are congruent. And that's fine. Those part, what they mean by parts, whoever wrote it, what they mean by parts are sides and angles. Okay, so that's the same thing. Okay, so they're the same size and shape, in other words. Okay, so we've got two triangles here. Um, so make a congruent statement. First of all, off, I can tell that the whole triangle, uh, the, the triangles themselves are congruent because I can see all of the angles have matching angles, and then all of the oops, all of the sides also have matching congruent sides. Okay, so I can say that these whole triangles are congruent. A congruent statement. Um, we've done this before. I can name the first triangle however I want. I'm going to call this triangle ABC. And I just want to say what triangle it's congruent to. Well, it's congruent to this one. And it's tempting to call this DEF, but that would actually be incorrect because I need to make sure that I've got my pieces matching up. Okay? So I didn't have to put this in alphabetical order, um, but I did. And I put the A in front. So that means I need the piece that matches up with A in the corresponding slot for my second triangle. So I'm looking for the right angle, and there it is, right? So this shouldn't start with D. It's actually going to start with E because I need A and E in the same slot there, okay? And then let's see, B, my second slot. So I need the, with the, the angle with one dash. So I can see B and F are congruent to each other. And then the C and the D are going to match up, okay? And that way, even without the picture, I can look at this congruent statement and I can tell what angles are congruent and actually what sides are congruent too, because A, B are the first two letters. That means they're going to be congruent to E, F. So side A, B, and E, F. And sure enough, if you look at it, yep, they're congruent. Okay, so there's my congruent statement. Okay. All right, now moving on to the next problem. Um, I've got, these aren't triangles, they're uh, quadrilaterals, right? I've got four sides, but um, it's the same principle. So here we're given the congruent statement, okay? And that's really key because that tells me what's congruent. So just looking at this right away, I know D and S are gonna be congruent um, because they tell me the whole polygons are congruent and D and S are in the same slot. So right there, I know D, and S are congruent, okay? And I can do the same thing with all the other letters. E and P are gonna be congruent. Okay, um, F and Q are in the third slots. And then G and R are in the fourth final slots. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this. So I'm thinking, oh, it would be nice to know what 6y plus x is equal to. So I'm looking for, oh, that's going to match up with the, with the um, 68 degrees. And that might be kind of clear just looking at it. Um, but, you know, you don't really want to go based on looks. You want to go based on what you actually know because this diagram might not be to scale. Um, so um, I can say from this that 6y plus x equals 68 degrees. And that's great. Unfortunately, I've got two variables in this equation, so I can't solve that yet as it is. But that's okay. So let's, uh, let's keep going. Let's look for something else. So looking at the sides, the only side that I have on this uh, triangle on the right, or this polygon on the right, is the 2x um, minus 4 part, the qr part. So I want to think, well, what slot is Q and R in in the congruent statement? It's in the third and fourth slot, so it should be congruent to FG, okay, which is down here. So now I know that these two are congruent. 
Another way you could do that, you could say, oh, it's between the angle with uh, the angles with the three dashes and the four dashes. So hey, between the three dashes and the four dashes is right there. And then I can say, oh, okay, well then two x minus four is going to equal twelve. Okay, and now I'm in business because I've got an equation over here that I can solve for x. I've only got one variable, so I'll add four to both sides. and then divide by two, x is going to equal eight. Oh, and that, this said solve for x, there we go. Okay, and then I still need to solve for y, but now I can use this equation because I know what the x is, right? So I can substitute in eight for x. Okay, and now I'll subtract 8 from both sides. And divide by 6. And y equals 10. And there's the other part to my solution. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next page. So I like to use the little dashes and for to show you congruent angles. Your book sometimes just likes to do the swooshes. So maybe this is a little hard to see here, but the, I, I copied this out of the book, this diagram that they're trying to tell you that those two angles are congruent. And then the double swoosh means, hey, those two angles are congruent as well. Okay, so this is called the triangle third angle theorem. And what it says is that if you have two um, different triangles where you've got two sets of congruent angles, um, oh, and this should say, shouldn't say if again, it should say then, comma, then, and I'll fix that on the, on the guide. But if you've got two sets of congruent angles, then your remaining set of, of angles is going to be congruent as well, okay? So then angle C, is going to be congruent to angle F. Okay, so let's just think about this. I don't know what the measures of these angles are. I'm just going to make up some measures. Let's say that I knew that this was um, 28 degrees. Okay, and this was, let's call this 92 just to make them easy to add together. Okay, so well, hey, if I know those two angles, then I know these two as well. Okay. And I know what the angles in a triangle add up to. They add up to 180 degrees. So let's see, I've got um, 120 here, right? The 110, yeah. Um, 120 degrees if I add those up. So I know that there's another 50 degrees to go. Okay, and since I've got the same equation over here, if I found my angle over here, so those third angles end up being congruent when you've got that first set congruent. It doesn't matter what the, the measure those first two sets are, the remaining piece is going to be congruent as well. That's called the third angle theorem, triangle third angle theorem, okay? All right, so let's look at a new example, and we're going to get back into proofs this chapter, two-column proofs. And this isn't a two-column proof, but you could easily adapt this into a two-column proof, okay? So this says, are these two triangles congruent? And then we're going to explain. I'm not going to write a paragraph or even a sentence. I'm just going to say what theorems or postulates or definitions I'm using to explain my thinking as I go. So looking at the diagrams to begin with, right now I would need all the sides congruent, all the corresponding sides, and all the corresponding angles. So looking at the sides, hey, I've got two sets of sides, okay, but I don't, I'm missing that third set. And the same thing with the angles. I don't, I mean, those are two right angles. So I don't technically have those congruent yet, but they are congruent. Okay, um, so what I can do, I can say, I can say angle BDC is going to be congruent to angle um, BDA. Those are the two right angles. Well, they're congruent because all right angles are congruent. So this is from a ways back. It's the right angles congruent, the congruence theorem. 
So you could say right angles congruence theorem, or you can just say all right angles are congruent would be fine with me, okay? And you know, if you left that off and just kind of assume that those are congruent, that wouldn't be the worst crime in the world, but technically we wanna say that they're congruent, okay? And then looking at the angles, hey, we've got two of the three sets, so hey, let's use the triangle third angle theorem. I've got two sets of corresponding angles congruent, and that means that, I guess maybe I should put two dashes in those to differentiate them. That means that my third set is gonna be congruent as well. So now I can say, hey, angle A is congruent to angle C, and that's gonna be from the third angle theorem. Um, your book just calls it the third angle theorem. I call it the triangle third angle theorem, but third angle theorem works as well, okay? Um, all right, and then looking at the sides, I sometimes see people say, oh, hey, I've got two sets of sides congruent, so the third set is gonna be congruent by the third side theorem. Well, there is no third side theorem, okay? Because I could have two, I could have two segments like that, and then another two segments like this, and if I close them off, those third sides that I just colored red are not gonna be congruent to each other. Okay, so there is no third side theorem, but I do have another way to do this because this side is in both triangles, right? So I can just say, hey, that's congruent to itself because anything is congruent to itself by the reflexive property of congruence in this case. So I can say BD is congruent to itself, and that's the reflexive property of congruence. So I'm just gonna say reflexive, and put a little congruence symbol in there so I don't have to write out congruence theorem, um, or postulate of congruence, I mean. Um, Okay, so now in the diagram, I've got all the sides marked congruent. I've got all of the angles marked congruent. So now I can, I can actually answer the question. I can say, are these triangles congruent? Yes, they are. And my explanation for that, all corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, um, going through this chapter, there are shortcuts, cuts a lot of them that you can use with triangles where you don't actually have to find all of the corresponding bits. But for now, that's all we got. The rest, of, a big part of the rest of the chapter is gonna be exploring shorter ways to get to congruent triangles. But that's what we have right now, okay? All right, so let's try another one, sort of similar to this, or the same type of question at least. So I'm going to look at the sides and angles. So looking at the sides, we're all set, right? One, two, three. We've got all three sets of congruent sides. I like to call these bow tie problems because it looks like a bow tie, and these show up a lot in um, every geometry textbook. It's just a kind of uh, it's a common scenario that you'll encounter, okay? So I want to start thinking about the angles. I don't have any of the angles marked right now. So I'm thinking, how can I get some angles? So I do see, wait a second, I've got two intersecting lines, so I can use the angles opposite each other. Those are gonna be vertical angles, okay? I don't wanna say angle C is congruent to angle C, because what angle C do I mean? Maybe I mean those two or these, I don't know, right? So I wanna use three letters. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this one on the left ACB, angle ACB, and that's gonna be congruent to DCE. Okay, and my explanation there, this is the vertical angles theorem. Okay, so my explanations if I was doing a two column proof would be the part in the right column, right? And these, the, my statements would be on the left. Okay, that's the vertical angles theorem. And then what else? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to use, usually, not always, there are sometimes some red herrings, some, some dead ends, but usually you'll use whatever information they give you. So I'm looking around thinking, how can I get more angles? And I'm noticing it's pretty small in this diagram, but I've got some parallel lines. So 
I'm going to think, well, is that useful at all? And it is because I can think about, if I think about these as, I like to call them tracks, like railroad tracks. I've got my tracks there, and let's, uh, we've got two different transversals. I'll just use this one to begin with. Let's think of this as my transversal. So I'm just extending this line. So I have two tracks and then a transversal. Okay, and now I've got my angle pairs from, uh, so that was two chapters ago. Um, so I can use, what I want to do is find a pair of angles that's in, that's part of these two triangles that I can use with the lines I just highlighted. So I'm thinking, well, what about this one and this one? That's going to work, okay? So when my tracks are parallel, um, these two angles are going to be congruent. Oops, I should put two dashes there, okay? And, and when I'm naming those, um, that angle pair, they're inside the track, so interior. They're on different sides of the transversal, so alternate. So these are going to be alternate interior angles. So you can say angle A is congruent to angle E. And it's fine to use one letter there because it's really clear what angle A is in this diagram. right? Same with angle E. Um, so that's going to be the alternate interior angles theorem. I'm abbreviating a lot there, but alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, And I can do the same kind of thing with if I use this as my transversal. Hopefully that shows up in the camera there. Okay, so if I'm using that as my transversal, I'll use these same two tracks again. Then I can do the same kind of thing with these last two angles. Or I could use the third angles theorem. Okay, so you can say B and D are congruent in either way. You can use alternate interior angles theorem again, or you can use the third angles theorem, whatever you prefer. Okay, so now I've got all of those congruent. And by the way, on these, a lot of times I could have saved the vertical angles until the end if I wanted to. We could have done these in reverse order. You could have really done any of these steps. Well, you don't want to use the third angle theorem until you've got the first two sets. But a lot of times the order of the steps is interchangeable unless those steps are leading directly from from one, one step to the next, but these are kind of one-offs, okay? And then I want to say, are these triangles congruent? Yes, they are, because all corresponding parts are congruent. And that is the end of the section, and I will see you next time. Have a good day.